Hey y'all, Kenny here. Thanks for joining me. I was asked recently in the comment section if I could elaborate on some of my guitar building processes. And uh, one thing that the viewer asked for in particular was how I build my truss rod. Uh, so if you have a few minutes to spare, I'll show you how I do that. My truss rod is designed to be accessed through the sound hole. Uh, it is a welded rod. I use an oxygen acetylene torch to braze the rod. Uh, I know that everybody don't have access to a torch. Uh, you may have a friend who does. An alternative may be map gas. Map gas gets plenty hot enough to braze, but in a torch like this, the head is too large. The flame is not uh, concentrated enough for welding. But burns o matic makes what they call a fire point. Uh, it has a hose. It has a small tip. I know the heat range is good. Uh, I just don't have any real world experience with it brazing, uh, but you may read the reviews and see if people are having success doing that. Now the alloys are really expensive if you buy them by the pound. I use a phosphorus copper brazing alloy, uh, but again burns a matic, uh, makes a nickel silver flux rod uh, that's high tensile strength. They say it's suitable for welding steel. Uh, and it's about five bucks, I think, on Amazon for a two-pack, which will make a lot of truss rods. Here's what you need to make your truss rod. This is quarter by quarter square bar. This is three-sixteenths round, 36 inches long. Get two truss rods out of that, about 11 bucks at the Home Depot. You'll need a piece of quarter-inch brake tubing. Uh, you can get that at the auto parts store, buy the shortest piece you can get because you only need about an inch of this per truss rod. You'll need a truss rod nut. I got this one from Luthier's Mercantile. They're no longer in business. I have found these on Amazon. I'm going to order some and see how well made they are. Uh, it has a hex so that you can insert an Allen key. And it is a 10 by 32 thread. An alternative to that would be one of these couplers. This is a 10 by 24 thread. Uh, the problem with this is it takes a 5 16 socket uh, to turn it. And if you went through that brace at your sound hole, you'd have to drill probably a 7 16 hole through that brace. So that requires some reinforcement there. An alternative might be to make a bent wrench uh, that would go under the sound uh, hole brace and adjust this nut. All right, I have my four pieces cut to make my truss rod. This old pine neck is a prototype that I made way back when I made my templates and my uh, tenon cutting jig. I keep it around for a reference. This mark is the end of the fretboard. And you can see I cut my slot to about an eighth of an inch from the uh, end of the fretboard. The second mark is where I step the slot up. The slot's a half inch deep and a quarter inch wide, but up here it's only a quarter of an inch deep, and I do that so that uh, the uh, bearing end of this square stock uh, will be pushing against some really thick wood because I make my neck really thin. Now, that may not even be an issue, uh, but that's the good thing about making your own truss rod. Uh, you can design them uh, any way you want. So I ground the end of the square stock round to uh, fit the uh, slot in the neck. And then I cut it off even with the end of the tenon. The 3 16 round is cut the exact same length uh, as the square stock. And I thread it. Uh, 10, 32 thread. You may have to grind a little bit of a taper on the end of this 3 16 a rod to get this die started. Uh, of course, use some oil. Don't force it. I turn around and back up a half, turn around. That's the way I cut threads. Uh, it's easy on your tools. Then I have my two sleeves, and they're cut a half inch long. This is again quarter inch hydraulic brake tubing. And I just use a little tubing cutter to cut those. So here's how the rod goes together. On the welded end, the end, let me get around here so you can see. Uh, the end of my 3 16 rod is even with that mark, which is 3 eighths of an inch uh, from the end of the slot. 
which is where I stepped up to a quarter of an inch, if you can understand that. You'll understand it better when I weld this up. Then I moved my sleeve back so that there's about an eighth of an inch of the rod uh, sticking out, and uh, I can weld that solid uh, on the end of that sleeve and it won't pull through. Then on the opposite end, on the on the threaded end, the sleeve is welded even uh, with the end of the square and the threads stick out about three-eighths of an inch. You have to check that against the nut that you're using. That way this nut then will protrude through the neck block and uh, you can access it through the sound hole to adjust the neck. I use a piece of angle iron to hold everything in place, two C-clamps. Kind of see how I have it positioned. So now I'll just slide the uh, rod out and weld the two sleeves to the uh, square bar. I am a jack of all trades, master of maybe a few. I'm no welder, but I can weld. A good welder wouldn't have to do so much cleaning up. Uh, but I have both ends welded, and uh, now all I have to do is uh, weld the rod. I have it inserted, and I'm going to leave it sticking out about 16th of an inch or so right there. And I weld it solid, clean it all up, and the rod will be finished. So I've welded in solid. There's that step in the rod where the channel in the neck goes from a half inch uh, deep to a quarter of an inch deep. You don't have to do that. You can extend this piece onto the end of the rod and make your channel a half inch deep all the way down. I put a little anti-seize on this nut uh, so it doesn't rust up and seize. That does happen. And uh, it's a lot of work to uh, remove a fretboard to replace a truss rod. I also put about uh, three spots of uh, silicone along this uh, rod to prevent uh, any resonance uh, from the rod in the neck. Also when you install it, a little masking tape on the surface so that it doesn't stick to the fretboard. Uh, I failed to tape one and it did glue to the board. I was able to break it loose but it took a lot of torque uh, on the nut. So there's the rod. Hopefully you can see that bow. That rod will tame any guitar neck. So the purpose of the truss rod is to keep the neck straight. I've come to realize a lot of people don't fully understand that. Some people will have high action that's not related uh, uh, to uh, the relief in the neck and they'll try to adjust that using the truss rod and uh, this causes all sorts of problems. So the way to check your neck relief is to put a capo on at the first fret then hold the string down at the fret that joins the body. Uh, on this guitar that's the 14th, on some it will be the 12th. And then mid-neck you measure the relief or the clearance between the string and the fret. And you can actually hear that uh, this one has clearance and it's about 5 thousandths now. I think I have adjusted this truss rod once uh, since I built this guitar. This is uh, Dillinger number five, and it was built in 2005. So uh, adjusting a truss rod is not something you're going to have to do a lot once the guitar's settled in, unless uh, you're going from a high humidity to low, or vice versa, or you have uh, extreme temperature changes and then the neck may move, but normally the neck, uh, if it's kept in a good uh, steady environment, uh, will uh, remain straight and you won't have to adjust it. If you do have to adjust the neck, uh, do so in 
small increments, no more than probably an eighth of a turn uh, at a time, and then give the, give the neck time to react uh, to your adjustment before you continue uh, to turn the rod. So guys, I plan to do some more videos in the future as time permits. Uh, show you some of the ways that I do things, some things that you can build yourself, some tools you can make that will save you money. You know, it's hard for the first time builder uh, to build a guitar and have to buy all the specialty tools uh, that you need. But my first build was just bare bones. And so I still have some of those tools. I'll show you how I did it. It is possible uh, if you have some patience. So if you're interested in that content, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.